Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about black holes once again. But more specifically about this new incredible discovery and a new study that created a technique allowing us to see extremely distant black holes in a way we couldn't actually see before. Okay, not really see, see, not with our eyes, with x-ray radiation. So let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. Now, sometimes there are incredible new discoveries that become extremely sensational, like for example, the first picture of a black hole that we could see with our own eyes. And this is of course the most famous picture of the black hole known as Puehi inside the galaxy known as M87. And because we can see it with our eyes, I'm pretty sure most of you are already familiar with this. But once in a while, an incredible study comes up with another way of seeing black holes, but because there is no actual picture to show, and it's really all just numbers and tables, it really kind of goes under the radar and nobody really talks about it. But this study right here that came out in Nature magazine is actually really, really impressive. Just as impressive as the picture of M87 black hole. So once again, here we're looking at a distant black hole in another galaxy, the so-called central black hole. This one right here that you're looking at is a simulation in the middle of our own galaxy. This is our own Sagittarius A star, the closest central black hole to us. But pretty much most of the galaxies out there, with some exceptions, have these black holes as well. Some bigger, some smaller. But at a distance of about 1 billion light years away from us lies another really interesting galaxy, the actual picture of which you can see right here. And this galaxy has the name, well, this name. I'm not gonna read it too many numbers. But essentially, this is one of the more well-studied active galaxies known as C41 galaxies that produce a lot of different emissions because the galactic nucleus in the middle, the black hole in the middle, is actually active. It's consuming a lot of matter, it's emitting a lot of energy, and has a very very bright center in the middle that we can see from really far away. So this is what this galaxy is all about. But it's also famous because it has a tendency to change its brightness quite dramatically. Even over a period of a few days, it can go up in brightness so much that it will suddenly light up and become like 50 times brighter. And then, just like that, it will become really dim again, and this does change quite a lot. So, it's a really fascinating galaxy for us to study because it will help us discover a lot of other secrets about black holes. But seeing a black hole at this distance is not easy. If you remember, the M87 black hole is only about 55 million years away from us. This here is almost 20 times as far away, so obviously things are much, much smaller. And the technique for using this interferometry cannot really be used at these distances. Something else has to be used if we want to investigate, study, and even create an image of this black hole. And so the scientists studying this realized that they could use the X-ray emissions coming from this black hole to try to understand what's happening here and possibly one day even create an image of the actual region around the black hole. But the technique that they used is not really difficult to understand. It's based on echolocation, or essentially reflections coming from the actual black hole that then create a sort of an echo that propagates throughout the universe and can be, I guess in some sense, heard or technically seen here on Earth. To study all of this, they used the amazing XMM Newton telescope that was launched about 20 years ago and is still very active, and this is the best X-ray telescope we have available. And so the idea here is that as the matter falls into the black hole and starts generating a lot of really powerful radiation, and of course X-rays, some of these X-rays will obviously go in different directions, but some of them will start interacting with the accretion disk itself and uh, the corona around the black hole, the actual region of space around the black hole that has a lot of really highly charged um, electrons. And these corona that are present around various black holes, in a sense, act as, well, I guess, walls in a typical room. In other words, they reflect various types of radiation and thus allow us to kind of see and understand what's happening in this region by looking at the actual echoes. And this X-ray reverberation technique is extremely accurate and helping us see not just the accretion disk, but also understand how fast the black hole is spinning and most importantly, how massive the black hole is as well. And just to give you a funny analogy, just so you can kind of understand how this works, by now I think, you know, if you've used a smartphone, you can usually pretty clearly tell when someone is calling you from a toilet. 
There's a certain echo that forms um, when the person speaks to you and you sort of start understanding that they're actually inside of a smaller room. And normally that room would be a bathroom. But let's just say you're a super smart scientist and you want to take this to the extreme. So by listening to their voice on your phone and by listening to various echo that you hear produced uh, from the actual phone call, you can then use the reverberations that you hear to reproduce in some sense the room they're calling from. So the echo itself and various properties of this echo will allow you to understand where this call is being made from. And this is pretty much exactly what the scientists did, except that it's not a bathroom, but it's a black hole 1 billion light years away from us, and it's not really voice sound, but it's x-rays. And one other major difference between the phone call and this is that the observation here was roughly around 5 years long and in total they collected about 23 days worth of data. So this was a pretty long observation of these echoes and allowed the scientists to run this experiment several times, I think it was about 16 times, creating an amazing opportunity for the scientists behind this paper to test and retest their observations. And so what they've discovered is that this faraway black hole is about 2 million times the mass of our sun. In other words, it's about half the mass of the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. But at the same time, it spins extremely, extremely fast. As a matter of fact, the scientist seems to have found out that it spins almost at the limit of how fast the black holes can spin, which is, of course, the speed of light. And this, of course, creates a lot of very unusual relativistic effects that we still are trying to kind of understand when it comes to these supermassive black holes. So basically here you can expect a lot of various time dilation effects and a lot of so-called frame dragging, which essentially means that here the time really passes super slow. And in some sense, this is basically what Interstellar was about, the type of a time travel that black holes can create. But anyway, because the study was so successful at figuring all of this out and they've created this really interesting technique, we'll now be able to apply this to many other black holes out there and it's very likely we're going to one day discover something even more incredible. But there were a few more discoveries in this paper and I think one of the more interesting ones is that they've also discovered that the corona I previously mentioned that's around the black hole seems to shrink and change in size quite dramatically over a period of only a few days. So the actual area and actual volume around the black hole is extremely dynamic. These black holes can transform so quickly and so violently that it's very difficult for us to imagine what all of this really looks like. This right here is just a simulation. And one day, using the technique discovered in this paper, we might be able to simulate all of this in a little bit more detail to help us understand what's going on in these extreme regions of the universe. And lastly, European Space Agency's Athena that's going to come out in 2031 will allow us to use this technique with a lot more precision and probably see things even more clearly. But because 2031 is still kind of far away, we might be able to come up with even more interesting techniques to allow us to study black holes even better. And I'm really hoping that this technique one day will help us visualize what's happening here in a little bit more detail and someone creates some kind of an algorithm that will allow us to use these x-ray observations to create three-dimensional pictures or images that can then become even more famous than the picture right here. But until then, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Subscribe if you still haven't and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Maybe support this channel on Patreon because it actually does help me quite a lot. But either way, I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye-bye.